Hi everyone, today we're going to be colouring in these orchids. Now this is from um, this um, Magical Jungle page which is actually in Johanna Basford's um, 2021 weekly planner. I thought it would be rather fun to do the orchids. Now I've had a bit of an accident with this book which I'll talk to you about as I colour which might impact how well these orchids actually colour. Now, I haven't looked at a guide picture for orchids. I'm just going to have a go with some colours that I like and hope that it's going to work. I have just noticed we've got some buds there, which I think are probably part of these, so we we'll, might incorporate those as we do. It depends how long it all takes. So I'm going to start with number six. Now, this is the purple. It always looks blue on film through my little viewfinder on the camera. I don't know whether it does to you as well. But anyway... I'm just going to start and you have to believe me that it's purple and uh, I'm going to start with I'm going to do this bit this bit and this bit in the same purple and then this bit in a different color so uh, just to make it interesting and it probably will not look like any orchid that anyone's ever seen but so what it's just a bit of fun so I'm going to start with putting harder layers here then lightening out towards the end and I will probably swap to the lighter purple colour that comes with this 36 set. If you've only got the 24 set, then you won't have the lighter purple. But you can, I'll just show you, look, you can just go light like this. So I'm going to go back down and get some more layers down here. And then I'll grab the um, lighter purple, which is number 62 and sort of take over with that here. I find it's a little easier to be able to blend it in. You get less white paper if you use a lighter shade, but uh, you could always blend it in with a white or a blender or burnish it down and then it wouldn't change the shade. But anyway, I was gonna tell you about what happened to this book now. At the moment I've been colouring in the kitchen, which I've mentioned in previous videos. We're going to do exactly the same on this one here. And um, so my book's been down in the kitchen and I've been using the kitchen table to film on. And I discovered the other day that I had put... I wasn't colouring this page. I was colouring the one behind this one. And I put the book down with this page folded behind um, on the... On, in the kitchen and I came along and discovered that there was a big patch of grease here on the page. Now whether I had put the book down on the table to colour and there was some left on the table I hadn't cleaned it properly first or whether there was just some splashing around in the kitchen with some grease or oil or whatever I just don't know but whatever happened I had this big patch of grease and I wasn't sure what to do. So I went straight on to the colouring group that I'm a member of, which is Johanna Bass for Jewel Pages, and went, help, help, I've, I've ruined my book, what do I do? And had all sorts of interesting different tips and tricks given to me. Do you see how that really helps to smooth it out using this lighter colour? It's lovely. And um, the tip that I was given that I decided to try so we can do exactly the same here and start with a harder amount here and all the way along under here and then lighten it out as we go towards the this end of the petal. Anyway, so I had all sorts of tips and the one I decided to take was someone said that they had spilt a whole bottle of oil over a book that they borrowed off someone. Can you imagine? <gasps> and that... Um, they got it out by putting talcum powder between the pages. Now I knew I had a little bit of powder so I thought I would give that a go because partly because I felt it I can't imagine it would do the book any harm whatsoever even if it didn't work apart from maybe just making it smell rather nice. I like the smell of baby powder which is what I had. So I tried it and it worked. So the it seems to have mainly come out. I think it was more on the leaves than this bit of the petal. But when we get to colouring it, we'll find out whether it has worked or not. But uh, that was fantastic advice. So very grateful for that. And I think other people were too. Not that they all needed it that then and there, but they noted it for 
for re further reference sort of thing but uh, that was uh, that was very useful but now but I wasn't sure whether once the oil had got on the page whether it would resist the pencil so we we'll see someone else did say that um, bicarbonate of soda would have worked but what I did just to sort of let you know was I um, just testing this bit because I'm sure there was a bit on there it looks fine was I I'm grabbing the lighter purple number 62 can you see yes you can um, what I did was I put a really large amount on the book on the spot where it was and took a piece of kitchen paper and placed over it and and then I turned it over and did the same on the other side of the page and I closed the book and I pressed it under my cookery books. Now my cookery books, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, there's ten, eleven, eleven cookery books. Um, hard, they're all hardback. So I pressed it under those overnight to uh, get it out and that seemed to really work. Now I've been talking away and not thinking too much about what I've been colouring and you can see that this bit, this one is much paler here than these are at the bottom but perhaps that's okay I'm thinking to myself maybe it might be they wouldn't be exactly the same I was intending for them to be lighter than they are I mean the obvious thing would be yes I could rub them out make them paler or add some white but I'm going to leave them like that I think um, and there's a bit of contrast then between the tops and the bottoms so these ones I decided I would do this pink colour um, number 61 now we've got these dots now I'm going to colour over those dots and uh, I've decided that I'm going to do them white and I've remembered to bring down my white pen so I'm going to just go over them in white pen at the end um, it's a bit easier than trying to do them a different colour or something like that now this um, these petals I'm doing very similarly to the others so I'm doing them dark towards the middle and then lighter towards the edge it's just a matter of pressing more lightly with the pencil and doing less layers we're going to do the same with all of them and then I'll probably use a lighter pink to just blend them up together after neaten them up a little bit Now there are lots of different colours of orchids. I really like the yellow ones I have to say um, and there are white ones and all sorts of things so there's a lot of choice when it comes to colouring these. Um, I decided to just go with whatever I wanted rather than even looking at a reference picture this time. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't worry so much. It depends if I want something to look realistic or not. See, with the, there's a parrot at, higher up in this picture and that one I feel I'm going to have to look at some reference pictures because if you do a flower and it's not quite the right colour I think it's okay because flowers do come in lots of different colours if I do a parrot and it doesn't quite look right I think it's going to bug me somehow I don't know why, whether I don't really understand why but I feel like I want to make it look a bit more real and I'll probably do it like a macaw um, they are the really bright ones that are red and blue and yellow I think and uh, I think it'll look nice if it's bright so you can see I'm doing less layers I've also got my pencil on the side so that it's easier to give a lighter pressure and it doesn't push the pencil so hard into the paper if it's on its side gosh I'm thirsty I made a cup of tea just now but I've left it on the other side of the kitchen It'd be far too hot anyway I've only just made it before I uh, started this video so I'm going to grab this number 20 this is the light uh, this is the same colour combination that we used for this flower actually but I don't think that matters that they're the same there are other um, other flowers as well in this picture so we can have some different colours too so I'm just blending that in so that it looks a bit neater 
really. And again with this one I'm using the side of the pencil and it's not that sharp, you can see. It's got a nice long um, lead on it because I uh, used this Derwent um, rotary sharpener on it, but um, which gives really long and pointy um, pencils but um, I've worn it down a bit now and I don't mind. I know some people don't like those um, sharpeners because um, they think they eat too much of the pencil and I think, yeah, I can understand that. It's quite scary as you see your pencil disappearing. Now we've got these um, little buds. We need to think about the colours for these. Now I will use the two darker shades, the pink and the purple, but I've got to think about whether I do all these sections the same or do them differently and I think because we've got different colours I'm going to do them differently so for this one I'm going to do purple on the two outside pieces so here and here and then pink in the middle but I'm going to do all the purple first on all of them and then do the pink so I think I'll do that one on that side just so it looks different and maybe this one, it doesn't really matter like that, I'm trying to get that one a bit darker and then grab the, um, so sorry that was the number 6 that we used before and now grab the 61 to do the missing bits really uh, as you can see pressing quite hard I want it to be dark all the way up, really, but I still graduate the colour a little bit so that it's darker and nearer to the bottom. And I'm pretty sure that's how buds tend to look, but also you'd have some shadow. Now I've got a bit bits of white showing which I'm not very happy with, so I am going to grab my lighter purple 62 and just tone that in a little bit, just neaten it up, really. You could leave some white. In fact, I've got a picture that I'm doing upstairs, number 20, which um, I've got an idea for some flowers which, where I might leave a white bit between the black line and the centre. It's a bit different from, it's a bit of a different sort of experiment for me. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Now I'm thinking now about the centres of these two. And I think I'm going to do a yellow. I want a nice bright yellow, so I'm picked number one in the middle. And then this bit I'm going to do black. And I think orchids sometimes have a bit of black. But, so that's why I'm doing, um, yeah, I'm just looking at my grey, but I think it definitely will be black. And for this bit I'm just going to do an even tone of black. I'm not going to try and shade it. You can shade black like you can any other colour. If you just press lighter or you can um, use greys to, to get different tones and shades. But uh, I'm just going to make this very black I think. And the same here. It can be easy to think that you don't like using black and that it doesn't really work for flowers. You could do this in a dark blue or an even darker purple if you've got one or you could use a black layer of black and then go over with another colour to brighten it up a little bit but some flowers do have black and it can often help to contrast with the bright colours as well so that's that and I'm going to now because I think I might forget otherwise do the white dots now I've got my jelly roll um, this is my number eight nib. I've actually got some different colour nibs. Uh, no, different size nibs for my white pens. But uh, I decided to use this one because it's the sort of middle one. I've got a five and a um, ten. I thought I'd use the eight. Now if you want to, you can go over the black line here. Or you can stay within the line. It's up to you. Now if I was going over the black lines in the whole picture then I would go over it but because everything else has got a black line around it I don't think it matters to leave it. Now this will take a little while to dry. 
and after that might want to do another layer. I don't know yet until it's uh, done. Now normally I think with an orchid the dots are darker, not lighter. But I just thought this would be fun and a bit different. Now also you could go over these dots and these dots. I can't do that because I'll drag my hand over what I've already done. So I'm not going to do that. But I'm looking at the leaves now. Now we've got this long stem here which goes up to these grasses. I don't think that's, I think that's connected with these flowers so I'm not going to do that. But we have got, we've got these buds, we need to do that. We've got these bits which also like these and these pieces. So I think we're going to do those. Now I'm going to start with the bit on the buds and then move on to these and I'm going to use number 57 Now this is a green that I really like and I'm going to start hard here and then lighten it up as I go um, I like these sorts of shades of green so that's it really for this but I think I'd yeah, just take it up into these bits and that's it for that colour we shall come back in a minute and then the same with here, a lot of dark layers at the bottom and then reduce it as we go up and here and I'm moving quite quickly with this um, now be careful if you move too quickly because it can end up a little bit messy slower if you're slower, you're more likely to stay in the lines and also less likely to produce something that looks quite streaky and liney because I'm doing lines but I'm trying to do them gently so that they'll blend in and they won't look too obvious once it's done. But if you are doing lines like I am, follow the shape of what you're colouring. So with these leaves I'm thinking about what they might have a stripe in them as is drawn here so I want to follow that stripe, I don't want to go that way I think that might not work and also when you do a line it tends to be harder when you first do it so like this this first stroke is harder so then it produces the effect that I want which is darker down here and lighter nearer the tip of the leaf Okay, that's all of those bits done quite quickly, but I hope you get the idea. And I'm going to now pick up my number 56 and finish off. So this is a slightly lighter shade of the same colour, and I'm just going to fill in the gaps, essentially. I like this colour too. As you can tell, it's been sharpened a lot, this one. It's getting quite short. Um, considering how short a time I've had it but I have a feeling that one of them broke a lot now with sharpening I find that there are several reasons why pencils break one certain pencils just break a lot and that can be annoying and I find particular colors tend to break more than others and I find darker colors break more I don't know why I just have discovered this Another reason is if you have dropped or damaged your pencil on the floor. Some pencils like these have, so you have a white bit between the lead and the wood. That's supposed to protect them from breaking and I find they are pretty good. Um, if your pencil sharpener is blunt, it will break your pencils. So be really careful with that. And some of them have several blades in so you can change the blade. So um, that so you can swap them over so if it's got a, a big hole and a little hole then you can swap them now I'm going to use a little bit of yellow to do some highlights on the ends of some of these leaves just to brighten it up and to give another sort of colour interest in it um, the other thing I found is if you're using a tub sharpener which collects the shavings if it gets full then you need to empty it because it, your pencil will break I think it's part, I don't quite, if the sharpenings get caught around the part, around the blade, then that that's, uh, can cause problems. Right, I want to do 
these little little ones in a different colour to these. But this bit here is obviously um, used all the other greens. So now that with that is all my greens. So what I'm going to do is pick some greens from the middle of here so they're not so close. I'm not going to use those outside ones. So I'm going to start with the number 52. Another tip for sharpening is to turn the sharpener and not the pencil. Apparently if you turn the pencil you tend to be putting pressure on the lead in a different way to if you just turn the sharpener. So that's a tip. And in this sharpener I've got here today is a rotary sharpener. It's got a handle so you don't turn anything. So that could help perhaps as well. But if you do have a particular one pencil that keeps seeming to break my biggest advice would be to write to the manufacturer just go to their website and find their customer services email them tell them what your problem is and ask them for help because they might have some tips that are specific to their own pencils they might be able to recommend a particular pencil sharpener or technique that you can use so I would do that a lot of people will go on to colouring groups and ask for help and things like that which is also a good idea but the manufacturers know more than everybody else because they make the pencils so that's that now I'm getting a bit nervous about doing this bit because this is where I had my oil spillage right down on this corner I think it was so we're going to see how well the Tolkien powder trick worked so as you can see I'm just reducing the amount of layers of colour and the pressure I'm putting on the pencil as I go along the uh, whatever this is leaf because I want it to get lighter towards the end that seems to be going on perfectly well that's really good news so we've got we're just doing the same with each one now if you wanted to emphasize the shadow that might be under this leaf um, petal I mean falling on the leaf you can you could use a darker green on that part or you could use a grey or a brown to create some shadow I'm going to keep it quite simple I feel that just doing this bit darker here anyway creates an effect and lastly the number 50 so I'm going to not start right down here I'm going to start in the place where I started to reduce the amount of green and just do quite a medium pressure because I still want it to fade so I am reducing the pressure as I go to the tip still because I don't want I want to, you to see the fact that it graduates to a lighter colour as you go along and you can see I'm sort of colouring in the direction of the leaf okay just checking you can see and we can just finish off these in the same way So that's finished you could go back over with another layer of dark colour but I actually am happy with that it just fits in shot look at that there we go so that's that's those done that little bunch so there's an idea of how you might want to colour an orchid um, I'm having a look at this white now it's dry and I think that looks fine I'm not going to go over with another layer but you might if you use it you might want to it is quite pinky still but I quite like that. It depends what you're going for really. So that's that. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and happy colouring.